Well, we're almost done shaping the back nine. We are almost 20 hours into this project. So join me as I show you a couple more holes before the next stage of development. Okay, so we last left off on the 13th hole, tricky little par five over water, not very long, but it's gonna be an interesting risk reward second shot if you're going for it in two. And even if you're not going for it in two, it may have an interesting long third shot, but uh, we'll leave 13 behind and the next hole is 14. So it looks like 14 is a par four, around 440 yards. Uh, some interesting slope to this. So right off the bat, I see sloping left to right. I think we can use that. We've got a possible green site up in here. And uh, yeah, I, I like the looks of this. So let's let's start at the green first. We'll build ourselves a green and a tee. And I'm just trying to get some kind of inspiration here as to what we're looking at doing. Let's see if we get our green size right. Um, let's go. Well, we may have to move some of those trees out there. We got this. Nice little mound area that the green could go up on. I kind of like this. I might bring the green forward and maybe see if we can move the tee back. Let's see what we've got for options on the tee deck. We have, we do have some latitude to move the tee back and try to keep it around 440. So let's do that. So let's see here. Let's get something 30 by 20 yards roughly. Let's see. Yeah, there's 30. Would be around there. And let's do 20. Would be roughly that big and these are just rough guidelines I'm going to use for putting a shape out there and let's do a green and again this is just a placeholder we will come up with the final shape later but for now we're just going to put some kind of green in here I don't know what do we want to see here yeah not a fan of that shape eh, that shape's a little better I'm almost thinking a green with no bunkering around it, which means we have to come up with some very interesting options. Uh, that might be a little narrow. Maybe that. Let's see if that works for us. So, one at about 30 yards wide and maybe 20 the other direction. You can see that's not quite enough in the wide direction. I think we can modify that. Let's see how this works. Yeah, I think we're better off just to kind of keep it like that. Yeah, we'll do that to have a shape. So let's go with our width properly first. So that is the width, but I want a little more along the center line. So somewhere in there. And then we're going to want that 20 yards wide. We don't want a green to be too small. So let's, uh, can we go back or forward? Let's go forward a little bit, I think. Let's try to capture that idea of 20 yards wide. Something like that, maybe. It's going to give us a starting point. I think we're almost at the 20 yard wide mark. It's close. May have to add a little bit of width to it. And if we want, we can do that at the back here. Maybe the yeah, back corner, something like that. Just laying a couple shapes on top. Just try to get the sizing right. We're likely going to come in and clean this up. But roughly, I think we've got something there that's 30 by 20 yards, giving us, uh, what's that come out? 600 square yards. Multiply that by nine. That's about 5,400 square feet. I think that's a good size for a green, especially uh, par four. Might even be big for par four at 440 yards, but I think we can work with that. So what I want to do next is just kind of get rid of those measuring lines. Whoops. Go back one step here. There we go. Distance marker, clear all and confirm. I guess it does that because a lot of people use that tool to draw a lot of their course out not me I prefer to actually lay out the features since you can move them so easily so let's see what we're looking at for t here so i said we wanted 440 for a distance roughly around there and right now you can see that uh, my waypoint is off so let's move the waypoint and let's bring it back into more the center of the green something like that i think that works so now we're looking at a 408 we're going to want to move the t deck back about 30 yards let's go back here it's a lazy dog leg to the right and where are we t-deck here we go and we're going to move that waypoint as well and i said we're going to take this back about 30 yards let's see what we can find here i think we have some leeway here to the green about 4:30. i think we can we might have to take a little bit of the dog leg out but that's not breaking my heart 
I don't know, some way that's 440. Let's see what that looks like. A little bit of a hike from the second green up to the 4T. I, I am not sure I like that. So for that reason alone, I may actually move that closer and keep some of the dog leg in this. So let's move the waypoint. We're trying to keep that 440 distance, but we want to bring it closer to the green over here. We don't want the golfers walking a long way. That's definitely going to bring that pawn into play a little bit more. Let's, let's throw it up in there. See how that looks. So there we go. There's our T deck. And our play into the fifth green. They'll be able to come up the hill there and come up to a T deck up top here. I think that works. So let's throw a T up here. So we have something to play test from. If you've been following along this series, uh, you kind of know the routine here that this is uh, the way I've been building all of the holes so far. It's just getting some surfaces in place so I can play it, I can see how it looks. And uh, I'm just going to throw an oval T up there, something like that. It's fairly level up there already. And then I'm going to flatten that out. And sculpt the land. Uh, there we go. And we're going to want to flatten it. And let's flatten it ovalish. And get the oval shape roughly right. And just go out from there. Something like that, I think. What shapes are oval? There we go. Just trying to get that right-ish. Don't want to get anything too close to the green, and then I'm going to bring it up a couple feet. That should level it out for us. Let's take a look and see. There we go. So we've got something to play from. That's going to be a nice little hole down to the valley there by the water and back up. So how much trouble are we getting ourselves into though when it comes to our landing zone? So looking at a fairway that starts about 200 feet from the tee. I've got to look over the camp. See your starting spot? Yeah. Interesting. It's going to get really interesting real fast. And out here we are sitting at about 317. Oof. I think I don't want this crossing water, but I don't mind having it lateral. So I'm just going to go up here and do a little bit of sculpting here and where the landing zone is. I think I want to keep this left or right angle. I wouldn't mind having something I think that allows the golfer to, if he, if he plays a little bit short, get a level landing area but if he plays a little bit long he's going to be playing on a bit of an angle because he is coming into a green without any bunkers for protection the greens can be a little tough as a result but i do want to create something that will be a bit of a challenge as far as uh, the angle that you're playing your second shot from so so we've snuck the water over a little bit further there now and I think we're ready to, let's throw in a fairway for now. Nothing too fancy. And we're just going to throw in some splines here. Like I said, starting out somewhere around 200 feet out. And just got to look over the camera here. Uh, 200 feet would give us to the T. Or sorry, 200 yards. I keep saying feet. Ignore me. So there's the play line. So somewhere in here. So just past that water. So I think... Well, why not? We got kind of an interesting feature here. Let's go with it. Let's make that work. I don't know if we're going to keep that tree or not, but for now we're going to shape it around it and it may have to go eventually. Same with those trees up there, but we'll keep on using what we've got. Take it out a little wider here as we get up towards this hill and more towards uh, where we at 350 where it should be long ways past our landing spot now so we can probably start bringing this in I like the looks of this hole I think this is kind of a neat looking hole already and we'll see uh, probably a pretty wide approach coming up onto the green here and you see we got a really wacky looking sloping coming up to the green but something like that I think is is not out of the question something narrow coming down may have to adjust this depends on where if these trees are staying or not staying like I said I like making use of all the natural features that I can 
and uh, that way to me it feels like the course is more realistic than just flattening everything out and starting from scratch that you're you're, you're kind of making use of the train like you know like a real architect would as opposed to just running it over with a dozer so i don't know something like that give us a starting point and we are going to fill that spline and then we will we are going to sharpen smooth this thing and give us something like that so how's that starting to look an interesting hole looks like a long ways down downhill doesn't it okay let's see how this plays from the t-deck i'm really curious to see where my landing zone is in relation to the water so let's play the hole and there's the look i'm gonna obviously have to clean up the edge of that t to get a better visual down there but uh, there's our landing zone so water kind of in play skinny part of the landing zone i don't like how flat that is i'm gonna probably make that a more uneven lie past this landing zone and then flatter here is the goal so but we'll play it up to here and we'll see what's going on i don't think we have any wind no wind set today sorry the camera is right in my way so off goes that let me just turn off my volume here so you don't get an echo from me playing it and that's going to give us a nice little pitching wedge in at 114 since we're playing downhill so it'd be interesting hole if you play it okay avoid the water i think we can get away with the skinny fairway we're going to do some fancy shaping on this that i'm not opposed to anything the way this looks i want kind of an uneven lie there uh, right now it's look how flat that is i want that to be use that slope from the left down to the right we're gonna we're gonna make this a trickier sh second shot in just based on the the ball being below our feet but i think we're we're already in the neighborhood of what we want to do what we do with the green is going to be interesting so that was hole number 14. so right off the bat i want to go in there i'm thinking that we are going to flatten out the start of this and we literally are just going to go in here and do something with a fuzzy brush and kind of try to take out some of the crazy angles here and uh like I said, if you end up a little short here, say you're playing into the wind by chance and you had a longer second shot in, I'm not minding people having a flat lie here. So I'm just trying to take out that little bit of a slope that's at place at the start of the fairway. And then we'll have to go back in and probably clean up the water a little bit here. But the idea is I'm looking to make this flat-ish, I guess. Just we'll look at doing it that's not bad like that it's got a little bit of a downhill roll to it but i don't want the flattish here so at this point my turn point my target i'm thinking that this is where i want a little bit of some slope so we're going to go back here and use the flatty brush with a bit of an angle on it so this one here go back here again and try that once over again flatten this one there we go and use this I'm going to try to get a little bit fancy here. So we're going to try to raise this side of the fairway is what I'm going to try to do. And that'll naturally give us some slope on that landing zone. Now I'm going up nine feet here. I don't think I need to go up that high here. I just want to kind of flatten out some of the craziness that we're seeing at play. There as well okay let's see how that looks down at ground level so see how we got some angle to that now we've got a nice gradual angle left to right and we've got flat right here in front of the camera and you're going to roll down to a little bit of that uneven lie we'll see if that's going to play the way i want it to and then up at the green we got a little bit of a jackpot here so let's just go in here and uh we will use a similar brush i'm not sure we need to 
really go up at all, but I do think we need to kind of clean up the angles and let it fall away from the green a little bit better. Some way that. Got this crazy slope here. I'm not a big monster fan of this. So I'm going to kind of go out here a little bit. I might even bring this down a touch. How is that looking? Well, first of all, we got a wacky angle on that green. I think that whole area needs to come down a little bit. I do think so. So I'm going to go over here to the rays. And we're going to go over here and we're just going to grab the fuzzy brush and highlight a lot of this area where the green is elevated. And we are just going to take this down. Let's knock it down about seven, eight feet. Try to get the slope coming up to that green a little nicer. Still a little crazy for me, but we are playing a shortish par four to no bunkers around the green. So I still think we need to, well, first of all, we've got to flatten that area because it's a real train wreck as far as how level it isn't. So let me go up here and get some flatness going first. And I think we can probably still bring that down a little bit and flatten it out. Getting there. We're slowly getting there. I still don't like that slope at the front. I think I need to take that down. So, let's do this again, but we'll do it in reverse now. Something like that. At the front edge of the green area. Not bad. A little bit of still something in front of the green there it needs to be cleaned up. The slope doesn't look great, but we will do that right here. Just kind of flat that out. Anyways, this is not really the fine tuning part of shaping anyways. We're just trying to get it close. The rough grading. Let's see what that looks like. Still got our angle there. We do flattens out, comes up to a green. So looking a lot better already. I kind of like the idea of a green that's lower at the front and then be higher at the back. So I can kind of picture that. Maybe something that falls off. Maybe it falls off in that back corner, in fact. Maybe we make the green a little bit wider back there. But uh, let's uh, go in here and clear out some of the crap that's in place to see if we can see this a little bit better. So we'll take out all this. And so ways to make a green that has no bunkers in interesting. You could have grass bunkers. I've done that before. We have like depressions around the green. Possibly areas of the green where the fairway allows you to run things off of the green if you don't hit a nice shot onto the green. So we could explore that as an option. Can't seem to get rid of this stuff. Let's see if it'll go away this time. And the tree left, of course. Let's go back here. Am I on cleared trees or cleared objects? One more time. Computer is really slow today. Okay, let's get back out of here. Cooler generated objects this way. Choose. There are some of them left. I really don't want to lose the the tree, so let's get a finicky here. This is kind of fine work, but I'm just trying to get something visually appropriate to have a rough idea of the shaping. I think that tree is far enough away behind the green. And again, go away. Tree. Bush, whatever you are. Okay, and I'm uh, not sure if I like this one or not. It's going away for now. Yeah, and then maybe we flatten out. Maybe we make one monster terrace across this. We don't have any super extreme greens yet, but if we were to go in and say flatten the front edge of this, something like that. 
right? So kind of clean up the front corner of this. And over here as well. I may have to wait, make this green wider. I'm already starting to see, but I'm trying to get it close to resembling what my idea is so that when I come back to this, this is 14 holes in. If I go in and start playing with the other holes, I might forget what the intent was here. So I just want to create something that triggers my memory when I come back to do more shaping. So I want to have the idea that I've got a two tier green here. And those are likely not pinnable spaces yet at the front, so that's why I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit wider. So that's kind of the idea. And then obviously the back would be flattened as well. I'm not sure what my elevation change is right now from back to front of green. It could be extreme by the looks of it. And there is a way to check that, but we'll do that in a second. Yeah, this would be a yeah, this long green like this with the two flat sections front and back with a, a sharp slope between the two is kind of interesting because you've got to be on the right slope and you've got to be proper quadrant of the green otherwise you're going to have a heck of a putt so I'm not hating this at all i think we may be onto something but roughly that now how unrealistic is the slope is the question eh, not bad and I think even back over here will make the green a little bit larger. But I think what will happen is I'm going to make a little bit of a ravine that's going to drop things down back in here. Something like that. We'll see if we're going to put some fairway back in there. And it wasn't enough yet to even affect the green shaping. So we'll drop it down a little further. Almost maybe a spillway or something back in there. Not quite there yet, but the idea is starting to shapen up. Let's... Uh, Make this a little wider and take it down again. We'll eventually get there. Okay, now we're starting to see some slope on the back edge of that. So, so that's what that green, the intent will be, as much as that's probably an awful lot extreme from what I'm seeing right there. Let's take a look and do a quick measurement on that sucker and see what the bottom to top is. So, bottom, top. Eh, you know what? For a green with no bunkers and it's relatively short shot in. I'm not sad about maybe doing that to someone. I'll probably clean the slope up a little bit. I want to get pinnable space top and bottom two pins. And that area is probably a little wide. Or maybe the front part's a little narrow. But we're kind of there. Well, let's try let's try playing up to this hole before we move on. And just before I do that, I need to... Go in, uh, one thing I forgot to do is with my fairway, I want to toggle the second surface, start making it look a little bit like a golf hole. And also, I haven't put any thought into any fairway bunkers yet. Maybe we won't have any bunkers on this hole at all. Maybe that'll be this hole's signature. And get six or seven out of this. Probably too much at seven, four. Yep. And we'll call that good enough for now. And... Oh, noises in the background. Okay, so let's play test this thing. Let's see what we've created for ourselves. So the idea is if we're short, it's going to be flat. If we're long, getting out there a driver plus that we're going to be into a bit of an angle. Which I think we've accomplished that. Down 46 feet, it's going to run up. It's going to hit that angle and probably roll a little right. So, oh, we pulled that left. Let's see if we got that ball below our feet look. We do. Now, it might be a little extreme, but we have the right idea of how we want the hole to shape up. Now, we're playing up to this crazy green, and oh, of course, I've got the pin in not a playable spot. Let's say I'm trying to play to the back of this green, up 37 feet. Say the pin was back right. Uh, see if I got enough club. Am I going to hit the face of that green and stop dead? And of course, I've got to take into account now. The ball below my feet. Let's see what that shot looks like. A little centerish. Didn't get up the slope. Back off the green. So yeah, probably going to make this green wider. I don't hate the slope. Some people will, but I think the idea is there. The the hole I want to build, as far as what 14 is going to look like. And and do we really need a bunker, right? 
I think we make the green challenging enough that we don't really need a bunker there. And uh, our tee shot has some skill element to it as well. And uh, where the heck have you gone? 14. There you are. Yeah. And uh, bunker wise, we've got water in play kind of to the right. If I wanted to, I could bring the water more into play. And I could do that. I might bring the water up a little bit behind there. I don't mind the natural planting there in that pond. So let me just do that while I'm thinking of it. Because like I said, when you come back later, then uh, sometimes you forget what your intent was. I don't mind this little peninsula, but I'm almost thinking that maybe something that comes in here is going to be interesting. So let's bring that out a little bit. Like that. I can nudge in a little bit more towards the the fairway, possibly. Let's see. How's that looking? That's definitely in our target zone. Don't want to lose those trees there, I don't think. Well, let's try that. Yeah, we lost the trees, right? But we can always plant the trees back in there if we wanted to, or we can leave them out. And maybe we, uh, you know, Maybe we take out this little peninsula here and just kind of clean up the edge of the pond a little bit. We'll see. When we get into planting, we'll see. I think that right off the bat, though, that now we're looking at this has got to go. I don't want to get rid of the little lily pads, I don't think, but I want to get rid of this stuff. There we go. So yeah, you get a bit of a, a wayward shot right on a skinny little fairway, especially with the wind in your face. This this bunkerless hole only playing 440, uh, even though it's uphill. Well, it's downhill and then uphill, so really it, it negates itself. I think it has a chance to have some, some character potential here. Come on, go away. You know, is that water reachable? I think it is. It's definitely a hazard to folks. And let me uh, let me go in here and play test this one more time before we move on to 15. Let's see if we can see the water yet. No, so we're gonna have to definitely clean up the the T shaping. And those trees may have to go. That could be what it's obstructing my water. But you can see at our landing zone, if we were to play that just a little bit skinny right side, we don't have any wind today, but say, say something happens that uh, it's going to go left and not work for me. But I think the water is in play if the wind's the right direction. And here we've got that ball situation, ball below our feet, which is what I wanted for the longer shots. And we're playing again up into this area here. And it's going to be an interesting shot for people. Pitching wedge is going to be not enough to get up that ridge with the height. And nine iron is going to require a little bit off it. And even still might be long. So it might be a trickier par four than how it looks from the tee and on the scorecard, I think. Yeah, so something like that. And then you're going to have a heck of a shot back up. And uh, yeah, I like the looks of that. I think, I think that works. I do think that maybe the trees around the water need to go just so I can get that water view from the tee. And one last tweak here on 14. Because when we were looking at it from the tee, that stuff there is not our friend. I think it's not really working. It could even be a possible spot for a bunker, but it's short for a bunker. Not sure it would ever be in play. So let's go into here and let's just clear that stuff out because we're, we can replant if needed. Let's go in here and just clean this mess out. Maybe leave the one tree and get rid of this stuff here. Looks like something's going to, something should be out there, I guess is how that looks to me even if we go out here and we we landscape flatten this thing and we try to kind of push this down something like that 
just kind of clean up the, the depth in that pond so we lose some of that funny little shallow areas here. We get something that looks like that. And then now from the T, we may have a better chance at seeing the water with that out of the way. It's starting to look a little more probable. So there's your view from the T now. So I think that that may clean up the issue with not seeing the water risk on the right side. And it's visually interesting with a couple little bays and lobes there and the water. No bunkers though. And that green might be obscuring the green. That may have to change that tree up for a different style of tree. Because right now it's blocking the view of the green. We have, we have a possibility that we can see to the green if we were to eliminate that tree. So that's 14. But we're going to get to 15 before we finish today. And then what I'm planning on doing is I'm not showing you 16, 17, 18. I'll do that off camera. And at some point we're going to come back and revisit. And you, then you're going to see how that looks. So 14 is our 15th. And 15th is going to be a par 5. Interesting. So you got a par five, and I think how do I want to do this? I'm thinking I want to bring the water into play on this hole, long and short. My elevation changes aren't suggesting that's a good idea. I could make this really interesting. I think. So let's try something here. I got an idea for this. So let's raise this area here. Oops. Let's bring this whole area here up right beside the green. Let's see here. Yeah, right in here. I want to be able to get to the next T deck, right? So this is all coming up. Let's bring this up. Some way that. And then what I want to do is that low lying area is going to become water in behind this green. So now we're going to go and do the opposite. We are going to go here and we're going to start dropping. Drop in the water. So water long. And water maybe even a little bit to the side. Let's see what we can kind of trouble we can get into here. Something like this. Something like that. So now we got water long. Maybe not so tight to the green. Something like that. I don't know if we're going to lose that tree, but we may have to replant some trees here. Yeah, we lost the tree. But then where get, this gets interesting for me is I think I want to bring water to carry as well. And if anything, I want the water to carry to be closer to the green than the water behind. It's kind of where I'm leaning. So let's see if we can maybe make the water a little farther away directly behind the green. So with that, we can bring that up a little bit. It really didn't make a huge difference. But I really want the water to come in somewhere right in front of this green. So right off the bat, let's just go with my standard 20 by... 30 green. In fact, I want it bigger. Let's go 25 by 30, maybe. Let's try it out here. So I want at least 30, 35 wide on this green. There's 35. And if I want to have the green short of the water, I think you're going to have to. There's 25. I think that's fair size. And for now, we're just going to put a regular green size in here and we are going to create a green nothing too fancy ovalish I'm guessing but not literally yeah I like that squarish looking one let's try that sucker out see how that works no, I don't like that shape we're getting the right size roughly but let's go this one no I don't like that one either Hard to find a good green size. Oval. Nah. Nah. Let's try this one. Okay. That's giving us something. I think we're almost the right dimensions there. Something like that, maybe. That gives us the size we're looking for. That's pretty healthy size green. 
and you're gonna be coming in hot because you're probably playing a long wood in here is my plan but then the idea is that I want some water in front of this sucker and the T is off to the left which means my water has got to come in from the right side I've got a hole over there I've got 17 to navigate but I think I can drop down some terrain here right in there somewhere and bring the water it's gonna take a lot of landscaping this would be some heavy dozer work I think in here but I think it's going to be worth it to create a really interesting par 5. How long is this par 5 right now? 540. Yeah, so we want people coming in here with a 5 wood. It would be not bad. But let's see if we can create some water. Um, sculpting the land. We're going to drop it. We're going to drop it with kind of a severe edge on it, I think, would be the plan. Actually, let's start with a more gentle slope for the beginning part of this. Okay, so first we gotta we gotta get some water to where we want it to go. So let's do that, and keep bringing the water in. It's coming like this. I'm using this kind of gentle-ish sloping brush because I don't want the water's edges to be super unrealistic. We may have to still shape some. Yeah, I think we're going to have an issue shaping this. Do I create an artificial pond in front that's higher and then a waterfall behind it? You know, that's kind of an option that's starting to pop out at me here. The waterfall would be visible from any hole? Not really. But I kind of think that if I want to put a pond in there, that I'm going to have to get creative with getting down. That's a, just a big change. Unless I take the elevation down. Let's see here. Let's see, see, see. If I play this downhill enough, I might be able to bring this whole complex down. Let's try that first before we get into making an artificial pond. Okay. How is that going to play out? Well, let's try that whole area down that much. Okay, so obviously we're going to have to do some shaping to get down there. But now our pond height is a little more realistic. Not sure it's even where we want to be yet. I still think we've got an opportunity to bring this down more. I'm going to change the shape of my brush and get over to fuzzy land. I'm going to take this whole area down. I really want it down closer to the water level like that. And then this whole area here is way too high, so it's coming down. Guarantee that. Something like that. Okay, and we're going to have a bit of a problem right here that I can see. I'm going to bring that down as well. Kind of that area there. Looks to me like it's got to come down some. And like I said, this is why it's called a heavy dozer time because. We're really trying to, okay, move a lot of earth in this stage. So we've got an island like green. That really isn't my intent. My intent is more so to create something, oops, that has water in front of it and behind it, but I really don't need to go crazy here so let's, let's raise all this up especially behind it something like that starting to get our green back okay we're getting there 
let's just say that we're getting there. We need to try to do some flattening here to make this look a little better. Flatten this and that way that. Okay, now we're starting to have something that resembles what I've pictured in my brain somehow here. Something where the ball can run off past the green, but it's not going to be quite in the water yet. It's going to take a pretty hot shot for it to roll back there. In fact, people behind the green likely would be pretty common, is what I'm thinking. So we're getting that look coming up now. And over here, I think we need to bring this area up. The intent here is to have a space for people for traffic to basically get around. the green and over to the next T from the fairway here. Okay, so I think we're starting to make that look the way we want. The only thing left now is to really clean up the kind of pondy look here. So we can do that. A little bit of down. There we go. A little bit wider pond. So, we're coming in par 5. This take a lot of work to get us to this point. But we're kind of there. I want the water, I think, a little bit closer. So I think what my idea here would be is to come up in here and uh, really kind of snuggle the water up close, closer to the green, I guess. And... I think I like the look of that or not. Let's see here. Putting a bit of a sharp edge on this. There we go. We're starting to get closer to the green there with the water. Something like that. Come on, somewhere right around there. How's that looking now from water level? Not bad. I might want to slope that a little bit better there. But I do want short of the green to be a problem we're going to work on that, that, that we may have to kind of clean that up with uh, a brush like this. Or pretty well, I'm just trying to make a little bit more gentle sloping up to the edge of the green. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this looks as we get closer. here too and then out here we're gonna have to take this down and get rid of some of the some of the ugly in the water there I don't want to see the bottom like that the shallow look I want it to be deeper looking so we'll just take this down a little bit here and there Uh, we can live with that for now. We may have to still tweak it a little bit, but uh, it's starting to get there. Okay, so we've done enough there just to kind of get the green idea of the green setup going and what that's going to look like for a fairway now is where we're going to get interesting. So let's get up here. We're going to play across from this T. Let me just see what our waypoint is on that green there now. And we are sitting at, okay, first let's get rid of the markers. We are going to clear all. And then our green waypoint is off a bit. So I want that middle of the green. What did we have? The hole was five, 
40 ish so we go middle of the green so we're going to back the tee up probably about 10 yards i think for this to happen so let's go back here and move our tee back 10 yards which is fine because i like to be halfway close to that green so let's grab that waypoint let's move it back to get us a 540 what kind of angle do we want in there? We're not really looking for crazy dog leg. We got enough difficulty as it is. In fact, I think I'd prefer to bring it over here a little bit. Yeah, something like that I think would work. So let's put a T up in there. And when we start play testing this thing, it's going to be interesting. Green brush. Okay. And then we're just going to put I don't know which way do you want this oval to be. Something like this. That works. Now we're going to come in and we're going to level this thing out a bit. Come on, land. Sculpt me. Flatten. Oh, flatten like this, say. Go ovalish. Get bigger with it. Bring it up a couple feet. And that should give us something to play from. So there's our shot right there from the T. And uh, yeah, we can't quite see the green yet, which is fine. It's a par five. And lastly, before I play test it, I really want to see where we can put the fairway in and see how this is going to start looking. So fairway is the last piece before we see if we've created what we want to, which is a par 5 reachable 2 with a long wood into a kind of an islandish peninsula like green. So at this point we're sitting in here, that's about 200 yards. So this would be the placement of our start of our fairway would be somewhere around here. And we're likely going to have to do some cleaning up of this landing area with the slope that's here right now. Again, not sure if we have a premium on bunkers on this hole. I have to visit that. But uh, down into here, maybe even fairway up into there that comes in. And as we get closer, fairway snuggles up in this general area comes back to avoid some trees on the inside lane and kind of works its way back out yeah probably gonna lose that tree there in the middle that one might be a little close but we'll see we'll just have that in place right that for now and then we are going to fill the spline we are going to smooth things so we don't have that funny angle and then we are going to also add the second surface while we're here rough and then we are also going to make that the proper width so we're in that six to seven range like that and you can see some bad shaping is happening there on the start of the fairway but we're going to live with that for now we just want to be able to play this hole and see how it's going to set up as a par five and lastly i think that i'm going to add some fairway to this too that i want to make this hole tricky for you to land your second shot and your option is going to go long and you're going to play back up to the green so we'll see if we can create that so first right off the bat I'm going to go in here and spline some fairway around this green as tight as I can. And then at the back, maybe that tree stays. We'll see. These trees aren't staying. Maybe that last tree stays. We'll see. We're going to put fairway back in around here. And then we'll bring it back in. We may even go bunker. Yeah, bunker of left side looks interesting as well. And we're going to fill this spline. And we are going to smooth this spline. 
And I'm going to also add my second surface to this one. And then I'm going to make it wider. And then the last piece of my puzzle before I play test is I want to I said I'm looking at bunker possibly left side. So let's get in there and throw it in there. I don't have the proper shaping for a bunker left side yet. I can see that right now. But for now, I'm just trying to put down some surfaces and get an idea of how I think the hole is going to play. A brush. I want myself a big bunker of some sort like this. Uh, something right out in here. You know what? Even that orientation there doesn't break my heart. Something like that. Get a bunker in there. To, just something, a placeholder. Yeah. Not big enough, but it works. Just gives me an idea. Okay. So, let's see if this hole plays right, and then we'll wrap it up for today here. Let's see if we've accomplished what we wanted to set out to do. We don't want an iron to the screen. That's way too short of a par 5. So if we have to, we move the T back. So, here we go. Driver out there, 291. Fairway is fairly flat right now at the landing zone, so that's not breaking my heart. We can't see the green, so we're going to have to fix that visual right there. I want to see the green. And there we are. We have five wood. This is exactly what I wanted. Three wood, too much. Five wood, probably too much. Three iron, probably too little. Let's try a three iron. Let's see if we get there three iron with no wind. No, exactly what I want right there. That's that's exactly what I want this hole to play like. Okay, so the drop would have to be here. And just one second here, I'm going to drop a ball. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to play this as a five wood instead. Whoops. Trying to rewind the shot, but my uh, there's a delay in the game today. I don't know if it's the recording feature or what's going on here. Here we go. Rewind shot. And we are going to this time play our five wood. That's the recommended club with no wind. And I I want a perfect shot into here. I don't really want this to be able to stick on the green. I want it just to hit the back and trickle off. So really your your second shot in is yeah, so I have to lower that down to let that run a little bit farther. But that's really your second shot for 90% of the time on this hole. If you're playing it in two, you are going to be playing up and uh, back up onto the green with water behind you. So I'm going to lower that slope on the fairway. But I think that kind of captures what I'm looking for in this hole. And that's the 15th hole. I'm going to do a little more cleaning up of it. And then I'm also going to build 16 through 18. And the next time you see me, we're going to start going back into adding more detail. Finer shaping, getting our surfaces totally done. Our, sh our, our, our fairways and greens and tees starting to look like what they're going to and uh, getting this course even more playable. We haven't even touched on planting yet, but we're going to touch on a little more hole-by-hole -hole strategy when we come back. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again probably back at the first hole. We start to do the next part of the process of building a course from scratch. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.